Hey everybody, welcome to Brick Vault. My name is Jack and today is another Sunday episode for Top Mocks of the Week. And I sort of skipped last week, so it's kind of Top Mocks of the last two weeks. There's some great stuff that went by. A lot more Star Wars mocks made it into this week's than uh, normal. And remember to stick around to the end of the episode where you guys, the viewers, can submit your own creations and uh, you can check out all the fan builds at the end. If you want to submit your own creation, I have left an email link in the description below. That is Brick Vault fanmox.gmail at gmail.com. Okay, well, anyways, let's get into it. This very first build is absolutely massive. It is Sentinel by Henry Pinto. A build like this is something that most LEGO enthusiasts can only dream to accomplish, and even the best only manage to get a build like this out once every couple of years. It is massive. This is minifigure scale, and for those that don't know who this is or what this is, this is one of the Sentinels from the X-Men comics. As depicted in the movies, they're much, much smaller, and I think there was an X-Men set where we got an extremely tiny tiny build for a sentinel, but this is how big they're actually supposed to be. Henry's Flickr page has a ton of pictures of this thing being slowly built up from the ground, and when you see this uh, standing next to his work desk, you have a pretty good idea of just how big this thing is. At minifigure scale, it is the size of a child, but it really is just the right size for a sentinel to grab onto one of the minifigures and hold him in his hand. The body is mostly dark blue, and you can see some gray and dark bluish gray pieces that uh, make up the mechanic detailing and of course it has these nice bright pink highlights just like they were from the comics. The build for the face is pretty expressive and one of the nicest touches is of course the sentinel's chest actually lights up as well as the eyes. The eyes glow red or orange. Also a pretty nice added touch to this build is we have a lot of the custom made comic book X-Men characters including uh, Rogue as well as Jubilee. Even upon closer inspection there are a lot of details, mechanical details mostly, to notice all over the Sentinel. All in all I'd say this is just one epic build. It would be so cool to have something like this in the studio and just awesome job with this. This is, this is so cool, especially me being a, a giant X-Men fan. Now this next build is also another gigantic one. It is the Trench Run by Martin Harris. It took over half a year or closer to almost a full year to complete and there are just a ton of light bluish gray pieces used throughout all of the detailing for the entire process of the trench. I don't think I've seen a trench that is quite as detailed as the one we're looking at right now. Of course this is the Star Wars Death Star Trench Run with the X-Wing running through. That is Luke Skywalker because you can see Darth Vader with his uh, two TIE fighter uh, escorts behind him. According to the builder, this thing is about eight feet long. And when you get these nice close-up shots like this, you can see every single inch of this entire build has some sort of mechanical detailing. I'm sure some of it was based on how the actual trench looked from screenshots in the movie. And then at a certain point, we've got a lot of creative liberties. Great builds for the turrets. I like those tire pieces that are used around the uh, barrels there. And this is definitely one of those builds you could stare at for quite a while. All right, this is uh, another build, the Porsche 919 by Manuel Nascimento. There's a lot of custom printed stickers here. In fact, even some laser printed stickers, but perhaps you can understand why there was a little bit of extra detailing put onto the Lego here. The build for this machine is awesome. There are some lights that you can see uh, illuminate in the front and even under the number. And according to the builder, this thing is still uh, remote controlled and can drive around. The technical proficiency of this car is absolutely awesome. It seems to have uh, more functions than what we got from our latest Porsche from LEGO last year. Now this next build is a bit less complex than uh, than the massive Porsche. It's called Three Wise Monkeys by JBF. This is of course uh, an illustration of that famous proverb, uh, see no evil, hear no evil, and speak no evil. It's a wonderful build being so simple in design. I really do like the style in which the monkeys were built with their legs sort of crossed out like that and their feet just barely not touching. And from what I can gather, there are three identical monkeys that just have poseable arms Arms. Their display stand is also very nice and sleek. An actual display within a shelf. 
Now this next build is another Star Wars one. It's the U-Wing, but specifically it is the UT-60D U-Wing on Yavin 4 by Joshua Brooks. Here at Brickfault, we really do appreciate the custom-built minifig scale Star Wars ships. And so this is the first really great one that I've seen uh, come for the U-Wing. And I gotta say, it is a pretty excellent build here. I like the really, really white contrast with a nice bright blue. And the panel detailing on the wings and stuff just looks a little bit cleaner than what we get from the actual set. Don't get me wrong, I really do like the U-Wing set. And I have a feeling that is also pretty darn accurate to minifigure scale. Here, there's just a few extra details that I think look a little bit nicer and something tells me that uh, this ship is working its way within the Star Wars universe quite nicely. Now this next build is a tiny little uh, Mario Bros diorama by Jason Seachin. Not a whole lot to explain here. A great little homage to Mario. Um, you can see that it's playing through one of the levels. I'll leave a link to the video. Now this next build is Krakatoa The Lost Island by Full Plate. It's a great little diorama, lots of excellent details to discover. I particularly like the bent palm trees with the droid arms and those uh, inverted dish pieces. And something else on this build that I thought worked really, really well were the different transparent tile pieces and the different colors used to show depth around the island. I've seen this uh, done with uh, creeks and small shorelines and other builds, but on a much smaller scale like this, I think that depth effect under the water works a little bit better. Anyways, it's a great little build and let's move on once again. Now, I wasn't lying when I said we had more Star Wars builds in this episode than normal, but this one totally earned a place, and actually, I'm sort of cheating, because Martin Harris, the uh, guy that did the trench run earlier, he also released these pictures as well on his Flickr pretty much around the same exact time, and the build here is so cool. The interior details that make up the palace are just incredibly clean. There's a lot of just atmosphere. We've got all the right characters in all the right places, and I think it is definitely worth uh, noting how good the photography photography is here. It's one thing to make an incredibly dynamic Lego build, but you can see that um, the photographer here really did try to capture sort of a really great atmosphere along with it. I'm pretty sure just about every single aspect of what is in the beginning uh, of Return of the Jedi is all laid out in one way or another. And uh, on a personal note, I think this is the best version of a Jabba's palace that I've seen out of any of the other custom mocks. Really cool stuff, and let's move on. All right, and this build is called Coral Reef by Orlando Hay. This is just a kind of Lego build that I haven't seen done to this sort of grandeur. This is a, a very, very vibrant coral reef with a lot of sea creatures and stuff swimming around, tons of different sea life and plants, and possibly one of the most colorful Lego builds I've seen ever. I personally like the look of this whole thing. There's just so much happening in uh, kind of not that big of a space. Really glad somebody made this build. And this last build here is Ares 3 by Bob DeQuatre. He's pretty famous for getting some incredible shapes, uh, especially in spaceships, and this is no different. The thrusters in the back are uh, built in a way that I've never seen before. And we have some great purple to pink to kind of lavender highlights that kind of just go all around the ship, but in a pretty subtle way. Check out the Flickr because there's a great way that cockpit opens up. And by the way, check out the Flickr links, uh, all the links to these builders below. Chances are if you liked any of the stuff that they made, you're going to like some of the other stuff that they've got on their pages as well. Now, this is the end of the review stage. It's time to get into the fan mocks. You guys have been sending in tons of cool stuff all the time. And because there's so many pictures coming in, they're just going to be flying by at a relatively even pace. Anyways, here are all the fan mocks. <laughs> 